Hi everyone, it's Kim and Jen from Fleece and Harmony and uh, it's a beautiful day today here. We have the windows in our shop open so you will hear sheep and lambs from the window sometimes during this, <laughs> this, this uh, video I think. Um, the camera seems to pick up everything so we're pretty sure if you hear, hear them they are literally right outside our window yeah. eating, eating. Um, so we have all of the uh, all of the sheep out on grass now because we finally have uh, weather that's not dipping down below, <laughs> below freezing at night for frost warnings or whatever. It's a little bit late, but here we are. So uh, this will air on July fifth, so in two thousand and nineteen, obviously, and uh, we have quite a kind of a full episode this time. We're going to do an interview. Uh, we're interviewing Janet Ogilvie, who owns Green Gable Alpaca in Birch Hill, Prince Edward Island. So we're going to tell you all about her, or she'll tell you all about her story. We uh, custom spin her uh, her alpaca fiber for her. So we'll we'll uh, we're actually be filmed. We actually filmed that in her little shop on her uh, on her farm, which is just lovely. And um, as usual, we'll talk about uh, our works in progress. No big spoilers there, really, for the works in progress. Well, I <laughs> think they're going to be impressed with how much I got done. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, the uh, we'll also um, talk a little bit about a shop update because we have some big news happening in our shop. So we're going to talk about that. And we'll just ask you that if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. Um, there's 14 more episodes that you can catch up. 15 15. more episodes that you can catch up on. And uh, by the time you get caught up to this, you'll have know, know our whole story inside and out. And uh, if you're uh, back, we're really happy that you're back again. We're still answering all those lovely comments and we'll just encourage you if you, if you like what you see to hit the thumbs up in the video and uh, certainly leave a comment uh, if you want. And we answer all of those comments. We also have a Ravelry thread that you can uh, join us there and uh, we get lots of comments uh, there. We also have a project thread where you can post uh, your projects as part of that that group so lots of ways to uh, interact with us on yeah, social it's really media really fun seeing everybody's finished projects so yeah we would encourage you to join that um thread for fleece and harmony projects if you've knit anything with our yarn right we love it to yeah. watch, uh, see, yeah, see really what people cool. are doing with uh with our yarn so that's lovely so I guess uh, we uh, usually do a little bit of a farm report. So there's not too much to report on. The weather has been wet. <laughs> I heard that there's been some references to Noah's Ark in some oh. of the local farming uh, <laughs> forums on Facebook. Oh. Um, people are having a little bit. Uh, we're never we're never happy with the progress <laughs> of hay because people some people got their hay in before the rain started. Others haven't, so they're just waiting now for the fields to dry out enough. And um, don't get me wrong, the rain has been great for the, actually the growth of the hay, but now you need to be able to take it off the fields when it's a two-part uh, process. Right, it's a two-part process, and to make dry hay, you actually need it to be dry in the field. And uh, if even if you're making haylage, you can't. Uh, I don't think you can. Um, haylage is actually when they bale the hay. Um, not as dry as dry hay and they have to wrap it in an airtight wrapper and it basically ferments and preserves the, the forage for winter. But you can't make that soaking wet can't in be the rain. Soaking wet. It can't be in the rain. So uh, everybody's kind of now on uh, pins and needles waiting for all of that to happen because a lot of people are out of even their emergency stores of hay. So we're lucky because we were able to put, uh, the rain doesn't stop the pastures from growing. So we were able to put all the sheep, uh, so the sheep and lambs are all out on uh, pasture. And uh, I actually had to make a post though to get dry hay for our rabbits because now that's becoming a, a bit of a concern. So I'm not quite sure. We have a couple uh, options, plan A, plan B, and plan C. So the first one is just to try to get some dry hay from somebody, but nobody's giving it up because who knows if there's going to be three days in yeah. a row. They do make a rabbit blend at the pet store. 
It's yes. like 16 bucks for, yes. <laughs> for 45 cents worth of it. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, if you're buying that, you can just go see a farmer and get a square bale for five bucks. Yeah, <laughs> go, go, meet, go meet a farmer. Yeah. It's worth it even if you have to drive because a square yeah. bale for nine rabbits lasts for quite a long time. Yeah. It has but, some flowers and stuff in it too. Oh, does it's it? It's very fancy. Oh, fancy, okay. <laughs> fancy rabbit cocktail. Yes, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so that's kind of the farm update um for that the weather report and forage update um we have had a bit of a tough week i have to say with our chickens so we have a fox that lives on our um on our farm which can sometimes be good because if you they say that if you have foxes you don't have coyotes and coyotes are a problem here on prince edward island as well and um so we're happy that we have a fox most of the time except when she's, before she weans or while she's weaning her kits because then they, they uh, like chicken on the menu. So uh, that's not a good news story, but there is kind of a funny thing that happened because we moved the chickens around so that, uh, and we've got them close to the house and they're in a mobile uh, chicken coop so that she can't get at them. And we let them out during the day to do their, cause they're, they're used to eating grass and bugs and everything. And then Ken goes out every night to close that up at dusk to make sure that they're all safe at night. So um, it's a little bit of a wildlife preserve <laughs> here because we also have a skunk that's living in another building that we have that we've seen by times. He actually, my dog has seen her hair up too close, close, a little too close and got sprayed yeah. the other night. Oh. But Ken went out last night and um, went to close the little hatch on the coop. So he actually bent down because it's like a, it's at a low enough level that the chickens can jump up in it. And he went to look inside to make sure that all the chickens were there and he couldn't see anything. It was pitch black. <laughs> so the reason why it was pitch back black is because the skunk actually was in there with his bum right at the door <laughs> eating a chicken egg and Ken said he got up close and personal with the anatomy of the skunk. Luckily the skunk was distracted and eating his, his egg that he didn't have time to react and Ken just backed away really slowly. As he backed away, he hit the <laughs> ladder behind the shed and made a racket and the fox ran out and the skunk took off and this morning there was definitely something got sprayed at the skunk and it wasn't the chicken. So we think the fox got sprayed <laughs> by the skunk, which is just a perfect revenge. It's as far getting as crowded coming. here. Yeah. <laughs> Very right. crowded in the chicken area. And Ken came in and he goes, oh, he was all like in a panic and he says, it's a circus. It's a circus out there. <laughs> there was chickens running and the skunk was running and he almost got sprayed and the fox got sprayed. And uh, anyway, it's a, it's a. We've all Mine. come across a skunk yes, by like, accident yes. and not managed to get sprayed humans. Yeah. Yeah. But the dogs go go right for it. But right. we usually back away slowly and have been lucky. But he does surprise you. He hides. Yeah. We used to call him Ernest. I'm not sure if it's still Ernest no, or not. No, it's a different one. Okay. It's a bit of a tricky one. Because instead of having the typical striped white stripes down the back, he only has a white tip on his tail and a white patch on his head. So he's pitch black otherwise. So, hence, he's even harder to see. Right. right. So, um, I think that he may be up for a, a relocate. <laughs> so, we live Get trap the sardines. Them. Yeah, so if they become a problem, we live trap them. And then there's a like an old dirt road close, not that close, by because you don't want it that close. But yeah. you have to travel over a highway and stuff like that. And we relocate them to that woods over and then there. another one just comes and replaces them yes so but it takes them a while before they actually really yeah. become a nuisance this guy is getting pretty used to us which I is not good. so yeah it's very flattering that everyone wants to live with us yeah anyway so that's that ken's feeling very lucky today that he didn't get sprayed but somebody got sprayed last night and it wasn't the chicken so i'm pretty sure it was the fox <laughs> the fox which to they kind of smell kind of skunky anyway yeah, they do have a funny smell. It's a skunky smell. Yeah, different from actual skunk, but rem reminiscent of yeah. skunking. It's weird. weird. I don't know yeah. what that is. They don't yeah. spray things, obviously, but they do stink. You can tell yeah. when they've been in a building, they leave yes. a trail of scent. Yeah, exactly. Probably a territory 
thing. I don't know. They thing. just stink. Yeah. Anyway. Cute. Yeah. But they're not, when cute. They're, not when they're harassing your chickens no. and not, not when they stink up the place. Yeah. We really don't need any unwanted inhabitants. No. <laughs> it's flattering as it is. Right. <laughs> anyway, so, so that's the farm story. Ken's feeling pretty lucky. Fox, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so what we're going to talk about, we'll talk about our works in progress first because it's going to be pretty quick, although as Jennifer alluded, she's got uh, more done on her. I'll show you what I've got done on my second arm of Joe Bat's arm, but it's, uh, it, I have been making progress, but it's kind of slow. Hey, why don't you do that first this time? Oh, okay. I'll yeah. dig, uh, I'll dig through it. So. I'm actually, this is actually uh, two balls of yarn, almost. I have this much of one ball of uh, knitting. So um, the last time we spoke, I think I was down here where the stitch marker is. So that's not a lot of progress for two weeks, but I've been trying to knit whenever I can. So I've actually been falling asleep at about 9.30 at mm. night, which cuts into the knitting, the knitting time. So it's obviously not blocked or anything, but it is coming, coming along. So um, I actually, uh, it's a bit deceiving because I just have about this much more to do and they're starting to do the decreases because I'm coming as to a reminder to everybody, this is actually top down. So, uh, oh yeah, I guess I have more than I thought. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned. You might see it again next time. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. So, um, because I'm really excited to start the next step because, uh, you know, there's an adventure to be had there. For right. Sure. <laughs> yes. It's always an adventure. Yeah. So that's it. So okay, good. Then, any ripping? No, no, no. Okay. I did have to dive down a little bit okay. because I noticed a, I noticed a mistake on one of my cables. I I miss miss went in the wrong direction with the cable, so I did that. That was a pretty easy fix. But this morning I actually had a um, my a double yarn over slid off my needle, and I noticed it after I had already knit it uh, past it. So right. that actually became a little bit more complicated than what I intended because the the lace uh, the yarn overs are in the middle in the middle of the cables so it was one of those scenarios where I was like oh I just need to take this few stitches oh, and out 18 stitches and then it, <laughs> then it ends up being more because you run into the cable on the side oh, anyway so but it's fixed yes. so no no ripping so that's now three weeks in a row with no ripping wow yeah I didn't have any ripping either yeah great We'll have to change the name of our segment from whip and rip to just whip. Yeah. Well, fine with me. <laughs> fine with me. Ripping is not the fun part. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. It does make for a good story, though. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to take a little pause and put my project on, and then we'll resume because it's not going to be very graceful <laughs> getting it on. Okay. All right. So this is my bear schwa progress. Quick change. Yeah, I actually can't believe how much I got done. Yeah, it's a lot. I don't remember what it looked like last time. I think I, I had one remember. side done. It was the diaper last time. Right, it was the <laughs> diaper last time. Now it's a full-blown sweater. So the right. sleeves I have to pick up now and continue on, but I did block it. And uh, I think there's gonna be like a skill to blocking it, just with the knit in the diagonal and everything. So it was good to have sort of like a dress rehearsal of the blocking yeah. anyway, and I just wanted to make sure it looked kind of arranged so that you guys could see it. So right. this sleeve continues on in the lace and then this is a stockinette sleeve. And then there's a little bit of detail that goes around along here to set this off, like a surface crochet oh, okay. outline. Yeah, um, which it doesn't really oh, need, really, but it is yeah. part of it. Yeah, it's always about the details. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, um, so I think I have about 30 rounds for the sleeve and then the cuff or whatever. And it is like a, is this a dolman sleeve? Yes. Yeah. I always want to call it bat wing, but is that the same thing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I think you can call it either one. So it's that type of sleeve. So, um, yeah, I'm just really happy with the fabric. It's a yeah. nice light two and a half millimeters is what most of it is done on going mm -hmm. down to a 2.25 for the collar and ribbing. And it went really fast. I mean, obviously. Once you had the color work and everything. Yeah, the color work part was definitely, you know, an odyssey. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I can't believe I knit two and a half millimeter sweater. Yeah. 
I would have thought it was going to take till Christmas, <laughs> uh, but it really didn't. No. So and you're going to be right on time with your test day. Oh, done. Yeah. Well, yeah. Way ahead of schedule. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy with it. And like this cable, the lace was really easy. I really didn't even, I never had to rip it. I didn't end up putting the line, line in. Oh, Hopefully good. I don't make, a, don't make a mistake going down the rest Might of just it. just jinxed it. Yeah. I, well, I almost did that last time. Too. Okay. I said the same thing. But um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, the pattern will be coming out at the end of July from Jennifer Beal. And mm -hmm. we're going to have kits for it. Yeah. And it's been really fun. It hasn't been as challenging as Ramia, I don't think. Or I'm just a better knitter. Yeah. Like this part was definitely took some patience picking up all of these and it right. is knit on the diagonal. Right. And we should say that you blocked it enough just to be able to show it, but it, the, there's still a bit more blocking to do. And Jennifer's hair is in the way, but I, so I don't know if you can see, but we blocked it, uh, or she blocked it flat first, but you need over the shoulders, you're going to need to block it uh like smoother than that because you can see that there's a little bit. Yeah. We took it off, it was still kind of And damp. a little bit more band blocking because yeah. I'm getting a little bit of puckering. It was actually perfectly smooth earlier this afternoon. But I took it off still damp. Damp, yeah. Yeah, so, so anyway, it was just to be able to show you guys and it probably yeah. will make it a bit easier to pick up my stitches and look, you know, it's just yeah. all nice and tidy yeah. now. Yeah. Um, so that's Bereshwa. Yes. I'm almost done. I will definitely be done by next episode and then we'll be moving right. on to something else. Right. Oh, good. But I did start something else too. This is like the most pathetic whip update ever. <laughs> so I have to say I had a little bit of a temper tantrum. I I cast this on. This is my ranunculus. Wow, okay. Uh, yeah. you can tell <laughs> it's looking great. This is my cast on and I got annoyed at the length of these needle tips and trying to do magic loop. And so then I kind of I had well temper tantrum might be a bit extreme, but I was like, you know what, I can't with this right now. Yeah. So I just cast it aside. I'm gonna put my short tips on oh, okay. on the cord and just make it easier to kind of like do magic loop with this. I don't know. I have I get very easily frustrated with my tools these days. Oh. I'm very picky. It has to be the perfect length of cord for what I wanna do, and then of course I'll be increasing because this is just the the collar. So it's hard to pick a size, and I just really didn't like the length of these. Oh, okay. It's going to be hard to do magic loop. So I need to switch all that. But I'll probably, um, I'll have more done on this next time too because I just. So those are pretty big needles for that uh, yeah, yeah. size yarn. So it's the loose, a really loose lace. Yeah, it's fabric, a gauzy, gauzy, gauzy fabric. fabric. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. And I was going to do it in the bunny, I said last time. Right. And then I decided I want it more gauzy. Okay. So I decided to do it in Elden because I do everything in Elden lace now. I'm addicted <laughs> to the Elden yeah. lace knitting. Um, it seems to be my favorite yarn. Yeah. So uh, this color, Slate, is not a color that Elden typically comes in. However, since I do own the mill, <laughs> I just went ahead and made myself some Slate. But in case you guys like it in slate i've listed this now okay so it's now temporarily available in slate as well i don't think i'll keep this color because i'm really fond of the selection that mm -hmm. we've had although originally i did make it in slate and yes. some people have a ball of this in slate and then i cut it right it got <laughs> it got didn't make the cut. disqualified um but now it's back so yeah. yeah, and I just think it'll make the ranunculus, I'll be able to wear it with almost anything right. in this color. It was really hard between this and amethyst brooch, um, but I thought, so oh, I'll just make it in the slate. And then if some other people want to try Alden Lace in the slate right. color, you, you can now too. And we probably won't make it long term, but it is on there now yeah. for you to purchase. And we'll put the link below to Alden okay. Lace. Great. Yeah. So <laughs> I did start it. Yeah, oh. good job. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna pause now and remove my bearish boss sweater. Okay. All right, so we're back. Back again. We're in <laughs> sand sweater. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is our interview with Janet of Green Gable Alpacas. And Janet was our very first client. Very first. For custom spinning. Yeah, and she's she, an early adopter. Yeah, and she also <laughs> did play a role in helping us get our funding approved yeah. to start this business. So we do owe her a debt of gratitude for that. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we explain a little bit more about how long we've worked with her and how we work with her and so on in the interview. But we often get asked how we ended up here 
and if we regret our decision to leave our corporate careers and how we made the decision to move and it's really hard to articulate and it's actually hard to remember at this point how right. it all evolved right however one thing i love about this chat with janet is that we do seem to kind of put our finger on what uh, this lifestyle gives to us that our previous lifestyle didn't. Right. And so if you've ever dreamt of running away and joining the circus, because this is similar. <laughs> yeah. Animal tricks, animal yeah. acts. Or there's a Matt Damon movie. What is that? We bought the zoo. Well, the zoo? Yeah. We bought the zoo or, or something. something. Anyway. Yes. So if you've ever wondered uh, what that's like to make such a dramatic lifestyle change, we do cover it in this interview. We think we're really, you're really going to enjoy it. So yeah. let's uh, go hang out with Janet for a bit. Right. Okay. So <laughs> hi, everybody. We're here in, at Green Gable Alpacas in Birch Hill, Prince Edward Island. Mm -hmm. And I'm being joined by Janet Ogilvie, who's the owner of her this alpaca farm. And uh, we're in her cute little shop. So I have all kinds of questions for you, Janet. Okay. But just tell us about the shop first. It's so oh. cute. Well, thank you. So the shop is actually... The renovated milk house. This ah. used to be a dairy farm. Okay. When I got here, it was uh, full of box stalls and cattle stanchions because they had, they had uh, farmed dairy for a period of time, and this was the milk house. Oh, so cute. Very cozy. You must have done some work. Quite a lot of work. <laughs> it didn't look quite like this when we got yeah. here. No. Right. All right, so now we'll get to the real interview. Okay. <laughs> so the first question that everybody asks us, and I'm going to ask you, is how did you get here? <laughs> How long have you been here? How did you get here? And I want to hear all about your previous farming experience. Okay. So <laughs> I've been here nine and a half years. I arrived January 2010. And this was, uh, I had no prior farming experience. I never lived in the country a day of my life. I'm a city girl, born and raised. Um, uh, my life, I, I'm from Hamilton, Ontario, actually. And... Um, so I lived in Hamilton virtually all my life. I've been a single mom since my youngest daughter, Rachel, was two, and she's now 25. And it was always me and the girls, and me and the girls. And I had a really good job. I worked at the University of Guelph. I was an administrator there at the veterinary teaching hospital, and I had a large staff, and I wore high heels and business suits to work every day, and I never went out of the house without my hair done or without makeup on. And Anyway, um, and I was very materialistic, actually. Mm -hmm. I was very concerned about the car that I drove, the vacations that I took, the job that I had, and the clothes that I wore. Mm -hmm. And although I had a good job, I had a really good job, it wasn't good enough for me. So, because I really wanted to make lots and lots of money. Oh, okay. So I decided that I would enroll at the University of Toronto and do an MBA. Because I wanted to earn a lot of money. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so I was going to school part-time and I was working full-time. And uh, six weeks into the MBA, I lost my oldest daughter, Amanda. And it was sudden and it was unexpected. And I didn't know what to do, so I went back to work and I stayed mm -hmm. in school. But about four months later, things got very bad for me. I went off work and I never returned. And it took some time, um, but I was eventually diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. And when my doctor first told me that, I thought, I think you're crazy. <laughs> because at that time, 12 years ago, people who suffered from PTSD were emergency services personnel yeah. and you know, soldiers, soldiers or, and mm -hmm. people overseas and that kind of stuff. So I didn't understand his diagnosis. And at the same time, I started drinking an awful lot. Oh, okay. And um, anyway, it took about 18 months, but I eventually got into Homewood Healthcare which is a world-renowned mental health facility in Guelph. I feel very fortunate that I got to go there. Mm. And I was a resident there for two months. And I was in a group, a small group. There were seven of us in the group in the Substance Abuse and Trauma Safety Program. And there were four veterans in my group. Mm -hmm. And although our traumas were very, very different, we behaved the same way. I do have PTSD. Oh, okay. Anyway, one young gentleman I met there, he was a two-time Afghanistan vet. Uh, he was only 33 years old, and he was from Halifax, but his grandmother lived here on the island in Seaview, which is basically right across the bay. Mm -hmm. 
and he used to come here every summer and he talked about this place constantly when I was in therapy and I had a couple of thoughts my first thought was I can't believe anybody lives like that because that sounds so foreign to what I know mm -hmm. and my second thought was but I still want to run away and that sounds like a really peaceful and really calm place to go mm -hmm. so I decided I want to move to the island so I had finished the MBA by this time and I looked at all those really really big important jobs in the Globe and Mail, the ones that I thought that I wanted, and I just didn't want them anymore. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, what the heck am I going to do? I knew I wanted to live on a farm because I was running away, <laughs> and uh, I don't really know who mentioned alpaca. Uh, I have no idea how I thought of it, uh, but I spent a, truly about three weeks researching the island, researching the animal, and I told my family that this is what I was going to do. I'm sure my family was very concerned, but I'm glad they stuck by me. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided in September 2009 that this is what I wanted to do. I moved into this property January 15, 2010. Wow. Okay. Moving in January to PEI is not always We did easy. it. That's, that's when we did it. <laughs> But it seemed to work out. Um, I think if you can make it through the first January, I think you're February, okay. then you're okay. okay. That's right. So I moved. I didn't know a soul on the island when I got here, not anybody. But six weeks after I arrived, my first 30 animals arrived. I bought 30 animals sight unseen from a farm in Nova Scotia. I wouldn't recommend it, but that's what I did. Um, and then by the end of June, I had gutted the barn. So I taken out all the box stalls and the cattle stanchions. I'd renovated the shop. I'd put up more than 2,000 linear feet of fence, and I put up a sign that said, Visitors always welcome, because I thought it might be nice to meet some people. Oh. <laughs> and the people started to come. So what started out as me running away has turned into something pretty good. Yeah. I kind of oh, like great. it here, actually. I'm yeah. supposed to be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So it's home. Now. It is home. It's yeah. absolutely home. Yeah. Great. So you basically were in business open to the public from the very beginning then. I was. I was. So my initial plan was that I was going to breed animals and sell animals and that was going okay. to be my income. Um, but I thought, well, you know, maybe I should have some product or something and people might stop in. And so that's why I decided to kind of have the shop. And I didn't really appreciate how many people come to the island. I didn't move to the island because of... I moved to the Tourism. island for... Yeah. No, I moved to the island for a particular lifestyle. Yeah. But I had no idea that there was such uh, a tourism industry, an agricultural industry, you know, craft industry, and everything I do actually hits all of those things. Mm -hmm. So what started out is people coming to the farm and me saying, hey, you want to, I got some animals, you want to see them, uh, kind of evolved into me being a tour operator in a fiber production farm. Oh, so it's evolved. Okay. Wow, okay, so I, we've known each other for three years, almost, mm -hmm. I think, or three years, and I didn't know all of that. So that's pretty <laughs> interesting. And it's really interesting about, not, the circumstances were not the same, obviously, but the um, motivation to move is quite similar, I think, mm. to find something a little bit more substantive in life other than just money and the job and the high heels. And the high, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Do you wear your high heels anymore? Because I no. don't. <laughs> no. I, in fact, I think I have one pair of suede high heels in my closet and they're full of dust. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is quite a change, but um, I don't know if you feel the same way. I'm I'm sure that you probably do about um, the very first time your animal, an animal was born on your farm oh. and the yeah. selling something that you've made. That's hard. Yeah. That's really hard to yeah. sell something that I've made. Yeah. yeah so how, how long did it take you to get over the thought people are giving me money? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> or it didn't. well, that's interesting because um, at first... I, I gave tours away right for several years I gave them away and yeah. I really I really enjoyed it I still re really enjoy sharing the farm sharing the animals sharing what I've learned with people who come not only learned not only about the animals but about life here and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff um, and I had no appreciation that others would really value it I thought they were doing me a favor by allowing me to talk about right. <laughs> my animals right. and my farm. Um, but no, 
they see value in it. So, it, yeah. but it took me a couple of years to to finally click and say, "There's, I have something of value of mm -hmm. here, and people would be more than happy to to pay, to participate, to engage, right. to have the experience." Yeah, because yeah. I think a lot of people find themselves in the same spot where looking for it's a piece of it's a piece of peace that they're taking with them. That's right. Well, I think I, that's. I think that people come to the island because they want something that islanders have, and I don't think that they can put their fingers on it. Right. So they want what islanders have, and I think that most islanders don't realize the gift they truly have. Yes. And yes. the gift they have, yes, it's beautiful here, but the gift that the islanders have is they know how to live simply and enjoy it. It's right. the and enjoy it that is their right. gift. And right. that's what visitors who come to the island are hoping to experience, if only for you know, right. a week at a time or whatever. That's what they come for. Uh, somebody, an islander, actually explained to me about three weeks ago, that just three weeks ago, that it's not... Uh, we were talking about grandparents and how the, the um, you know, past generations here on the island, that it was a hard life. It mm -hmm. was the the weather is not easy and mostly <laughs> agriculture or fishing, and um, but we were this guy and I were talking and he said but I said well but they were still happy and he said they were contented. That's right. So he said they weren't always happy but they were always contented always content. and I think that that's contentment is actually maybe more of a hard uh, thing to to find in your life than just happiness. That's right. So, I agree. Yeah, I so it's agree. interesting. So. I think I'm behind the camera here, but I'm going to say that um, I think it teaches you how to get joy from within, which is something you will take everywhere you go. Right. Yeah. So you are forced, like there are no shoes to buy, really. I mean, <laughs> compared to what we were used That's to, true. you're not going to go out and get a Louis Vuitton purse anytime soon. Yeah. So you must but. really go within and figure out where true joy comes from. Yeah. And uh, I think that's just such a valuable thing for everybody to have in their life. And I'm assuming if you left here, you would take it with you and be a different person wherever else you went as well. So I always feel very thankful for that, that, that we don't need entertainment. We actually just, you know, we have contentment. Yeah. That's right. It's really cool. Yeah. Here, I can sit on my front porch and I'm not wasting time. Yeah. In Ontario, if I sat on my front porch, I was wasting time. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So our paths crossed. It did. Because I'm so glad. <laughs> because of the of the animals. Because yep. uh, as you evolved, I guess, from tours and so forth, you wanted to produce something from yeah. the fiber from your alpacas. And you were my very first uh, custom. Actually, I think the second or third batch of yarns that I made was your alpaca because I made sure I was so nervous about doing it that I made sure that the guys oh. from the Belfast Mini Mill were, were still there, there doing my remember. training <laughs> when your when your uh, when your uh, fiber arrived. So, so, um, so now. A lot of water under the bridge, a lot of yarn has been made, yeah. and a lot of spinning has been done. And uh, um, I think that in my experience now that I have, which is still relatively new, but a little bit more than when we first met, is that um, I'm always impressed by the way that you, you look at your fiber as obviously the heart of your business in a lot of ways mm -hmm. but also you're you're one of the most active people that I know trying to improve your your fiber and so um why don't we just talk a little bit about uh fiber I knew nothing about I had never touched alpaca fiber before <laughs> before I started spinning yours which is I don't know if I told you that before but that's <laughs> it <was> scary <laughs> uh -oh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so why don't you, uh, will you talk a little bit about alpaca uh, fiber and um, you, you also are quite scientific about your approach uh, in improving yeah. your fiber. So you can ta tell us a little bit about that as well. Okay. So the single biggest factor in determining fiber value, whether it's alpaca or sheep wool mm -hmm. around the globe is average fiber diameter. Mm -hmm. That's the single biggest factor that determines the, the economic value of a bale of wool. Mm -hmm. So, and there is um, a gold standard in terms of, of qual quantifying and qualifying the qual 
I guess it's qualifying mm -hmm. um, the quality of the fiber. And in Canada, we have grades of fiber for alpaca, and I I don't know what they are for sheep. I'm sure there's there's some, and they're probably the same mm -hmm. same numbers. I don't know, but I do know for alpaca. So we have six grades of fiber in in Canada, with the lower grades being finer and the higher grades being coarser. So a fine fiber generally is is felt to be a softer fiber mm -hmm. and is more a uh, more valuable fiber. But uh, fineness alone isn't isn't important you also need consistency mm -hmm. so uh, what I like to I like to use analogies with my clients when they come here because mm -hmm. we go through this and we talk about averages and standard deviations and all that kind of stuff so the analogy I use is let's say you've got three three numbers mm -hmm. 5 10 and 15 mm -hmm. what's the average 5 10 and 15 <laughs> 10 oh. I guess <laughs> exactly exactly you can have another three numbers um, 9, 10, 11. What's right. the average? 10. 10. <laughs> they both have the same average, right. but they're very different. This one is much more variable mm -hmm. than this one. So this one is going to feel a whole lot nicer against your skin than this is going to mm -hmm. feel. So while the average is important, a, a low average is important, what's more average, more important from my perspective is that the standard deviation be much narrower because mm -hmm. that means it's going to be more consistent. Mm -hmm. So we do something called histograms every year on every animal. Um, and a histogram is really just a graphical representation of the, the fiber, fiber diameter. Um, and what, what, so I send a sample of fiber to a lab in either Colorado or California every year, and they actually measure the individual diameter of all the fibers. Mm -hmm. And there's about 2,000 samples that they take, and they do an average, and they get a standard deviation, and you get this histogram, and there's a bunch of other information. So I use that information to not only make breeding decisions, but also in terms of deciding which fibers to put together for processing for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the um, so you take uh, samples from different parts of the animal, or is it all one sample? So all of my samples come from the midside okay. of every single animal. So we're trying to compare apples to apples as much as we can. Mm -hmm. We do know that there can be variation mm -hmm. um, in the fleece. That's partly why when we take the fleece off the animal, we take it off in sections. So we'll take off the blanket first, mm -hmm. just like over the back and around the sides, just like where a horse's blanket would be. Right. We call that the first. Some people get the 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 grades of fiber are confused with the sorts of fiber mm -hmm. um, because they use numbers. So the first are the back and around the sides, but that doesn't mean it's a high grade right. or a high quality fiber. That's just the first. That's the prime fleece on that particular animal. Then typically what's on the neck and on the top of the legs would go into another bag called the seconds. Mm -hmm. Now often, not always, that fiber is not as consistent mm -hmm. in terms of fineness or in terms of length. Mm -hmm. You don't really know that until you get it on the skirting table and, and decide. Right. So sometimes what I like to do is um, when, I, when I'm speaking to folks and trying to explain the difference between grades and sorts, think of a, think of a porterhouse steak. Mm -hmm. You can get a porterhouse steak from a grade A beef or you can get a porterhouse steak from a grade triple A beef. Mm -hmm. Same cut, different, different right. grades. Right. Same as with alpaca. Yeah. So um, you do a really good job sorting because even now I get to, I know your animals <laughs> by, their, by their names and I know what kind of fiber they have and the ones that I like and the ones the that ones I don't like. The ones that are like. dirty. Yeah, that like to roll. So um, I think that that's, uh, that's sort of similar to sheep's wool as well, Probably. except that I think there's more variation on a... The, from what I've seen of what you've sent to me, more variation on a single sheep, like at the bridges that can be, there can be Kempy hairs and okay. things like that. So it's really... There, Is Kempy a medulate? Yes. Okay. Yes. It doesn't die very well. Okay. It's kind of coarse and springy. Like mm. it's uh, so... Um, whereas on alpaca, if we see any kind of guard hairs or whatever, we take those they, we take yeah. those out uh, right away. They sort easier out of alpaca, actually, than I find they do with wool. Because oh, wool okay. is kind of, uh, the wool that we work with mostly is very crimpy, so it kind of holds it, it holds it yeah. in, whereas it kind of falls out of the alpaca. So it's, uh, it's a little bit um, easier to take those those uh, those hairs out of out of okay. alpaca than it is out of out of sheep so. okay so this is what a histogram is going to look like 
um, as I said, it's just a graph with a frequency distribution, truly. Mm -hmm. And it gives you the, the average fiber diameter, or AFD, and then standard deviation. And this is Keswick, and Keswick is, this is 129 months. So that's 12 plus years old. Right. And his average on this is 19.8 microns. Which so is pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Because the older the animal gets, the coarser the, the typically. blanket. Yes. Typically. So yeah. just like people, as animals age, their fiber tends to get coarser. Right. So he's still a grade one fleece. Yes. He's got a standard deviation of 4.3, which is not too bad at this point in time. But if you look at the comfort factor, the comfort factor is um, 100 minus the the percent of fibers over 30 microns. Oh, and okay. if you get if you get a fleece or if you get a garment where more than 5% of the fibers are over 30 microns, it's going to be really itchy. Right. It's going to be really itchy. He's got a comfort factor of 97.6. Oh, okay. So, you know, he's 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 the He's the signature herd sire in my in my right. farm. He gets a lot. Of, he gets a lot of dance cards. Oh okay. yeah, <laughs> a lot of action with him. Yeah. So and yeah. the other thing that you can see here is this is pretty tight together. There's mm -hmm. a high peak. There's there's quite the tight, uh, tight, and about seventy five percent of his fibers are under twenty one microns, mm -hmm. which is pretty good, pretty nice. Yeah. So by comparison, this is one of my older girls. This is Pearl, and that's at 120 months, so a little bit younger mm -hmm. than Keswick. So she's got an average fiber diameter of 29, which is more typical of what mm -hmm. a, a 10, 10 or 12-year-old animal is going right. to be. And of course, her standard deviation is about 5, 4.8, 4 but her comfort factor is only 66 point, right. or 68.6. Mm -hmm. So there's, she's got a lot of fibers over 30 microns right. now. So her fleece, while we can make some really nice yarn from it, mm -hmm. this, her fleece is more suitable for yarn that's going to be used for uh, mittens mm -hmm. or socks or something that you need a little bit more durability. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're going to have to skirt out those those coarse, coarse fibers. Right. Well, then when they get to me, you've already sorted the ones that you I've want tried. to go together. Yeah. And um, so we work together to mm -hmm. decide like what the yarn is going to be and yeah. who's going to go with what. Some Sometimes uh, things change as we're doing them. But that's pre we pretty well know when you drop the bags of fiber off what you're going to get when, yep. they, when you get back, when I send them back to you. So um, you like me to spin all of your fiber that you get you send to me 100% alpaca. I do. So we don't do a lot of blending. Uh, no. I don't think we've done any blending with your fiber no, at all. No, I don't think all. you have. Yeah. No. So I also buy fiber from you, and I blend mm -hmm. <laughs> with wool. And um, so just to compare to wool, for people that understand the microns for wool, a good, uh, a fine merino, considered a fine merino, I think is around 17 microns. I personally don't worry too much about that because my, my thing is that we're spinning 100% island fiber. So yeah. I'm kind of committed to do that no matter what the microns are. <laughs> Or yeah. microns are. And you can't and get merino here. No, you can't get merino here because it's too wet. Yeah, not even in Canada. There's no, no bird in Canada, is I there? don't think so. And if there are, they're so. probably in small private yeah. private flocks. So what I'm my challenge with wool is to put together um, similar to what you're saying, fiber fibers that are similar yeah. in in, it's going to feel more comfortable if it's, it's similar. Be, yeah, so even even if it's coarser if it's than coarser, that, yeah. it feels more comfortable, yeah. and that's what uh, that's so that's how we manage the fact that we're tied to the fact that we have to use island uh, source wool, which is fine with us. Yeah. So, and I think um, you're looking for two different things when you're looking for alpaca and if you're looking for wool, and I'm talking about hundred yeah. percent wool. So, um, alpaca, the way it performs in a fabric when you knit it. We can talk about that a little bit. It's much more drapey. It is. Now it's really going to depend. So there are lots of folks that say that alpaca doesn't have any memory. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Memory is a function of curvature. Right. So curvature and fineness, the two of those factors together mm -hmm. make something springy or not springy. Right. So we'd say crimp. Crimp, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you can get alpaca fiber with lots of crimp. And... And it's measured. It's one of the things measured on, oh, okay. on a histogram, but it's not going. To, the amount of crimp in even a really crimpy alpaca fleece is probably equivalent to one of the medium crimped sheep mm -hmm. breeds. 
Um, but the difference then becomes in what's the fineness of or the coarseness of the fiber. So consider a spring. If you've got a spring and it's a really, um, and the metal in the spring is small or has a small diameter mm -hmm. versus another spring that's got the same number of, of revolutions, but the metal in it is thicker, mm -hmm. that's going to have more bounce than the, than the thinner one. Right. Yeah. Right. So lots of alpaca fiber tends to be very drapey, but you can get some, and we've mm -hmm. seen some, mm -hmm. with some re some decent memory. Mm -hmm. It's never going to match a merino. It's never really? going to match a really... Corydale, which I've yeah. been hearing some in my vlog, so... Yeah, yeah. but you, you, you can still get some alpaca fiber that has some memory to it. Now I'm speaking about wakaya fiber, not surrey fiber. Right. Because there's... Two different types. You don't have any surreys. I have no surreys. No. no. Okay. No. And sir, <clears throat> I do spin some surrey from another uh, another herd, and it's more, um, uh, much more. Um, I don't want to say silky because that gives the wrong impression, but it's mu it's it's Got uh, a lot more luster. Yeah, a lot more luster. It's it's definitely straighter, even than the straight yeah. hakaya fiber. It's, so uh, surrey alpaca has fiber that grows parallel to the right. skin almost in ringlets. It's a coarser fiber, right. um, but it's very smooth because the scales on the fiber are very close right. to the surface. Um, whereas wakaya, the scales on the fiber are a little bit more raised and, and on wool, wool, sheep breeds, mm -hmm. the scales on the fiber are even more raised. Mm -hmm. So, And it's the height of the scales or the lack of height of the scales that causes the, ref causes the um, the luster. luster yeah. So the closer it is to the surface, think of silk that has no mm -hmm. scales at all. It's really lustrous because the light is able right, to, to right. bounce off it. So when we, if we compare to wool, um, the long wool breeds are actually, the fibers are not very, very uh, fine. You okay. can, they can be as much as 32 microns okay. or whatever, but they can still feel quite soft if they're treated, the way they're treated when they're spun. Just to what you you say, they're lustrous, yeah, and they're they're a lot silkier. So if you spin them in a way that uh, makes sure that everything is is, and you don't have a lot of variation in the 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 fiber that you're spinning, you get that. So it would be the same with surrey. No, I understood that if you've got a longer staple, yeah, you don't have to apply as much twist That's to right. get it to stay together. Right. And that in itself, if you apply less twist, is going to yeah. make it feel softer, whereas something that's has to be spun really tight yeah. is going to feel a little bit more ropey. That's maybe. right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And uh, also you, but you, it's, so this is, I mean, these are the kind of decisions that we make when we're deciding yeah. what kind of yarn <laughs> we want to want to do because the tighter the spin though, the more durable the yarn is depending on what the application is. That the, So if you wanted to make socks, for example, yeah. Um, then if it's a tighter spin, they're actually more durable than a, okay. loo a loose spin. If you want a beautiful shawl, then the looser the, the looser spin, the better it's, it's more better as far as drapiness and that okay. kind of thing uh, goes. So, and then all that all depends on how long the staple length is as well. So, um, it's, and we make the, those decisions while, while we're spinning. I call you. Okay. Yeah. This is what I'm finding here. <laughs> oh, Kim's you? calling. Oh, what? what? <laughs> What's going I don't on? Care. Are you okay? We handle this this way. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, the last time you were at our shop when you dropped off fiber, you were talking um, a lot about breeding. So you're actively um, introducing different genetics to your to your herd. I think right. Or no, you've kind of found so, what you want. So yes and no. So I did add. Uh, this spring I added four animals to my herd. Right. So the one girl, Bella, I added her because I have coveted her since the first time I saw her. Oh, okay. So it was a lot at first sight. <laughs> kind of. So similar to Keswick in that Keswick is 12 years old and still is producing a grade one fleece. Mm -hmm. She's nine years old and had about five babies and she's still producing grade one fleece. Right. So, um, I wanted to add her to my herd, but mostly my herd is, is a closed. A closed yeah. herd, yeah. 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 Similar to us. Safer. It is safer. It's a lot yeah. safer. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. There's a there's an expression in uh, with the cheap people, and I'm sure it's the same maybe with alpacas that you buy your problems. 
in. Oh, that's true. Junior. <laughs> that's really true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, good. But you're, um, I guess the, my point was that you're actively trying to produce the best I am. fiber that you, that you can. And I am. Put, so put each your... year, once I get, I send all the samples to the lab. Mm -hmm. So last weekend we did shearing. So I've got a sample from every animal. It's mm -hmm. going to go to the lab in the next couple of weeks, I'll get the information back and I'll then make decisions about mm -hmm. who gets to breed and who doesn't get to breed. And the ones at the bottom of the list don't get to breed. Right. So, um, so I'm always looking at, and I, I look at a number of factors. I look at their AFD, so their average fiber diameter, and I take, okay, which are the, which are the top producers here? And then I consider which are the top producers with standard deviations and which are the top producers with um, mean curvature and which are the top producers with the fibers less than 30 microns and I highlight all those in a different column and the ones that are highlighted across the board those are the ones I want to breed right because they're the top in each of those categories right. so right. I kind of I kind of say okay which are the ones that are most which categories are most important to me and then make decisions mm -hmm. based on that so that uh, gives a good overview of the fiber. So maybe we should show some of your yarns that you oh, have please. for sale. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so here we are with the yarns. Mm, We're going to talk about the yarns. Ones. They're really, really nice and soft. So um, I'll just uh, hand you the yarns and then you can well, you can tell me who it is because okay. I don't remember what I, <laughs> what I spun. <laughs> so the first thing that I'll say is that your herd has a lot of different colors. Does. And mm -hmm. the tendency for alpaca is to kind of keep them um, natural colors a lot of times. But we we had enough natural colors, so now it was time to give them over to Jennifer and yes. do some dyeing. Yes. So this is, uh, I would say this is uh, pretty typical. There's not a lot of snow, snow white. No. It's, they're all kind of like an acru yeah. uh, color when they're considered, and is this considered white? It is, uh, actually, and this is considered fawn, that's white. White, fawn, okay. For us, as far as dyeing, it doesn't matter what the color is no. underneath. No, no, in <laughs> fact, um, it's interesting. I think that a lot of alpaca farms choose to have their fiber processed natural color. Mm -hmm. But in my experience, my clients love the dyed stuff. Yes. Yeah, they yeah. really love the dyed stuff. And I love the dyed stuff too. Yeah. I just have well, to say it. It's a, I, 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 uh, I get it why you would want to keep, you know, be keep natural colors. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's white, fawn, and beige. <laughs> Well, there are a few there's beyond black. that. We but had black, no. we had black yeah. uh, at one time, too. But so, uh, so it used to be, or, you know, people will tell you in the alpaca industry that uh, white is preferred commercially. Yes. White or lights because it's more easily dyed. But in my experience, and with Jennifer's help, mm -hmm. um, I actually prefer yes. dyeing the darker stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. There's a lot more dimension. Oh, it's so yeah. beautiful. Um, you actually, we actually have spun things for you that are darker than this even. Yes. And I think uh, one of these is was quite dark. I think the purple. Yeah. On so, the purple. Uh, this is gray, natural yeah. color. Uh, yeah. I don't have any gray alpacas. Uh, I have black and dark brown, and I had white. So you you blended the fibers for yeah. me, and you spun it as a gray. Yeah. But I had lots of gray. So Jennifer. Yeah dyed it for me yes and it turned out incredible so i don't know how well you can see it but there there's such dimension yeah. to that color that only comes because yeah. we had not only is it gray in here but we had we had blended the fibers so this is more of a heathered heathered mm -hmm. kind of yarn mm -hmm. stunning it's amazing absolutely stunning so i too think that white is overrated <laughs> For dying. Yeah. So, and Jennifer does as well, because it's really, the, the we have lots of black sheep in our, uh, in our flock, and people that would be doing, like, commercial mm. wool flocks would That's be it, yeah. horrified, but in fact, we, we over-dye our black, uh, black wool as well, and, or mix it, like, do, um, combinations, like, like, um, was done with that. So, well, here's another one. Yeah. So, these two are start, start out this color. Right. And both of the both of the these are the same. Mm -hmm. So I call this one eggplant and this one fox actually. Right. And I love these. Yeah. I love these. And there's no way you can get that color 
from that. No. You're just not going to get it. Yeah. It's got that muted kind of um, uh, heathery look yeah. as well. It's not tweedy, but it no. uh, has that muted, muted, great for color work. Mm -hmm. Like traditional. Mm -hmm. Actually, work. seeing these two together. Mm. I do have to say they look stunning. And they're available for sale if people are interested through your Facebook shop or through your website? Through the website. Okay, through, through the, website. the website. In the yeah. in, in here, of course, and right. online. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. But these are gorgeous. I love them. So then, this is maybe what white's oh. good for. <laughs> yes, I love that too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what did you what did you call the one? <laughs> this, <laughs> this one here. So there's a yeah. story behind this. So we had decided when I was back, the last time I was at the, at the mill and we yeah. were talking about what I wanted done with my fiber. Mm. Um, not only do you and I have the conversation about how it, I'd like it sp spun, mm. I also have the conversation with Jennifer about what colors I want. Because yeah. I'm scanning everything to say, yeah, I like that and like yeah. that. So we had a real conversation, real good conversation about dyeing some um, white, some speckled, because I hadn't had any speckled mm -hmm. yarn before. So we agreed on this, and I think this is called... In our world, it's called pansy. That's what I yeah. thought. Huh. So um, so you got my fiber spun, and it was just being finished up, and then I got a message from Jennifer one knit night <laughs> saying, yeah. by the way, can I sell some of your yarn? Yes, yeah, so I hadn't even made it out of our shop. <laughs> I hadn't made it out of the shop, and I'm like... Of course, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it was a skein of this. Yeah. So, and I believe, I, I won't say who purchased it. Well, it was the infamous Jennifer Hicks. It was yeah, Jennifer yes. Hicks. <laughs> She's a sucker for a pretty yarn, that lady. Yeah. So, so I have decided to call, decided to call this Impatience. Yeah. <laughs> right. In honor of Jennifer. In honor yeah. of Jennifer. Yeah. Yeah. I think exactly. it came up a couple night knit nights ago again because yes. she's trying to, she's f trying to find the perfect ah! uh, the perfect project for it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. 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 But yeah. absolutely love it. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, so this is really, really lovely, mm -hmm. and I mean, it's uh, it's just fantastic. But you do it, to get this particular look, it does need to be fair white underneath, yeah. whereas the colored ones are um, yeah. with the browns and the the darker uh, colors. Yeah. Um, and I love to experiment. I love to experiment. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you'll um, maybe I don't know what the name. I know all the alpacas have the colors all have sp very specific names yeah. but you have um some animals that it's like a real reddish brown naturally yeah. right so what's that color called so hmm, most of what you've seen is probably it's uh rose gray so Ro oh yeah it's so it's it, gray yeah it's considered oh, right. rose gray because they're actually white fibers in oh, okay it. so it's kind of a reddy brown yeah but if there's white fibers in it it's considered rose gray okay mm -hmm. is that a sought after color I don't know. I don't like that color. <laughs> but, but no, not on its own. Not typically. Like that's that's not fun. Yeah. Because last year you overdyed something like this a beautiful red. Yeah. yeah. Gorgeous red. Yeah. yeah. Stunning. Yeah. yeah. So you don't. I'll just say you sold out of the overdye that we did, did. over this. Yeah. I sold okay. out of everything. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So is this, so this is considered rose gray. That is considered rose okay. gray. Okay. Uh. <laughs> it's hard to tell. <laughs> Rose gray. Okay. I would have died. No wonder I can't keep the name straight. <laughs> so this is how our, our our things evolve. When people are saying, like, you guys are always laughing, this is how we get there. I think that's considered devolving. But devolving. Right. Okay. So this is this is Rose gray. Personally, I'm not a fan of this. Not but good. Jennifer overdyed some of this, and it was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And we would love to show it to you, but it sold out. Sold out. Right away. So, yeah. but we'll, I'm sure we'll do it again. Yep. Some other color. Oh, yep. But it's such a, it's such a good, um, it's a good lesson in people that are married to their ideas of what they think should be done. Like it should be natural or it should be whatever, or yeah. that's, or that's not really, uh, it's for some people this might be desirable, but for me, this is not really a yeah. desirable color. No. Nothing, no offense, rose gray, but when you when you over dye, are kidding it, out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when you over dye oh, it, dye. you can't get something more beautiful. That's right. With do, doing it on white, it was absolutely you know it's a perfect marriage between the fiber, the color, and the yeah. and the dyeing that was done. So that's so. why I don't breed for color. 
Yeah. The color I get is the color I get. I right. prayed for fiber quality. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could grow this color. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could grow this color. Yeah. But yeah, I don't I don't breathe for color. No. I think uh, I think no. that's where like that that kind of thing I don't know, I'm I'm I it drives me crazy when people make judgments about this is good and this is bad and whatever. It's not that's not there's no bad fiber. No. There's no bad color. There's it's what you do. It. There's a purpose for it, yeah. and it's finding the right, uh, the yeah, right matching it, the, matching the purpose to the to what you have. Yeah. And um, in my case, I'm married to doing wool that I source from local farmers. They're not necessarily concerned about the wool quality, but it works because we yeah. we make it work. You have your closed uh, herd, more or less. You're continually improving it, and like you said, the colors are. It doesn't really matter because really you matter. can match it to the to do the right purpose. So that's a yeah. good uh, that's a good um, a good philosophy to have, I think. So so no no yarn or fiber is unloved. Yeah. So um, so everything is in your your shop. Do you have everything on your website for sale? Or um, it's hard to keep an inventory up to date on the website and in the physical right. shop because, especially at this time of year, because I just have too many people. Yeah, so they have to come here. So <laughs> yeah, so they have to come here. <laughs> they have to come um, here. So come and visit. <laughs> yeah, my the yarns are going to sell out in no time. They sell out every year. Yeah. So. Um, there are some things that I stock routinely right. outside of the yarns, um, and they're always an online shop. What I do encourage folks to do is, I mean, it can be hard to just see a picture of this mm -hmm. to get a real uh, appreciation for not only what the actual color is, yes. but actually how it feels. Yeah. And part of what people are buying, it requires them to to, squish, to really feel the squish it. factor. Yeah, yeah exactly. So mm -hmm. what happens is people who have already been to the farm, who've already kind of manhandled all, all the mm -hmm. yarn, they know what to expect when they see one of my skeins online. Right. So, you know, it's easier for them to say, yeah, that's that's exactly what I mm -hmm. want. Um, and that's typically who buys my yarn mm -hmm. online is somebody who's already been a client and has oh, already been okay. here and already know. Okay. Yeah. So I will say it's very soft. So <laughs> if you're looking for soft uh, yarn and you uh, you don't want to buy, uh, you know, merino or mm -hmm. whatever, then this is a, this is, but I think people, a lot of people know that alpaca is a soft, a very soft fiber, but it's re it's really soft and it does have a, have a bounce, especially this one is, uh, yeah, has a nice do. bounce. Yeah. But not all alpaca is created no. equal. No, that's right. So you have to trust Janet. You do. Yeah. And somebody's going to ask me about your sweater oh, or ask, ask us. So you sell these in your shop. I do. I, sell, I, I do sell these in my shop. Now, before I will put anything in my shop, I will uh, trial it. Right. C because I need to be assured that whatever I sell in my shop is going to be of quality. Right. Because I don't want people coming back and saying it wasn't high quality. Yeah. So about two years ago, two and a half years ago, I guess, uh, I was in Ontario. I was at uh, one of the fairs in Ontario with my daughter, Rachel, and we saw these sweaters at a booth and there was a, a Peruvian gentleman there mm -hmm. selling them. And I said, oh, I really like that. I want them in my shop, I think. Will you sell to me? He says, no, I don't wholesale. <laughs> I'm like, come on. No, don't sell wholesale. I said, I'm, I'm tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy two. I bought one for me, bought one for Rachel. I said, if these wear really well this winter, mm -hmm. then I'm going to contact you in the spring and I'm going to ask to buy some. I don't wholesale. He says. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Rachel and I wore them all winter and they were wonderful. They're yeah. light, they're soft, yeah. they're warm. I washed mine once in two years. Yeah. Just once. Yeah. Anyway, the spring came along and I contacted him and I said, look, I said, I'm in Prince Edward Island. I'm not your competition. I really love your sweaters. I've got mm -hmm. quite the clientele here. I'm, I'm sure they would like them. Will you sell to me? He says, okay, but I'm not selling to anybody else. I said, okay, no problem. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so that works for me. Yeah. So yeah, they're quite, they're quite nice. Yeah. Thank you. So you can, you can get those here. Yeah. That's well. So let's do your FO section and just show this lovely, because this is a pattern we've shown before, Hosti. Hosti. Yeah. And yes. uh, I knit one out of llama fiber. I'm quite certain yours is just a little bit softer. <laughs> but just showing the, the fa now famous Keswick this knit up. This is Keswick. So yeah. Keswick is now 12 years old. This is from his last year's fleece. So that 19 micron, four mm -hmm. standard deviation, mm -hmm. uh, less than 3% fibers over 30 microns. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And I really enjoyed the pattern, by the way. Thank mm -hmm. you for recommending. 
So, yeah. Thank you. It's really cute, eh? Thank you. Oh, Janice, thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. It, was a blast. it was great to be now uh, I know. here visiting you. I, I understand how much fun you have. Yeah. <laughs> I know, <laughs> it, gets, it gets ridiculous sometimes, but as long as we're having fun, That's we're right. content. Content. When we're having fun. We're right. Okay. <laughs> give, us, give, give our guests a hug. Jen, Jenna will get her hug after. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Okay, so we're back. We had such fun with that yeah. interview. It was great to uh, spend some time with uh, with uh, Janet and just talk to her about, you know, how she she ended up here and you heard, you know, how that all ended. And um, we also all bought one of those sweaters that Janet is wearing. Yeah, so <laughs> and, nice. Yeah, so that alpaca sweater, Janet sells those actually. Yeah. So uh, we all ended up, well, we all, Jennifer and I ended right. up with one each when we uh, we left. So, and if you've seen the promo for this uh, video, um, we all have <laughs> sweaters on, so we're yeah. the three. And so I didn't take mine off for a week because it was still 12 degrees. Yes. And, yeah. yeah, and so I wrote to Janet and I said, one would think when one buys an alpaca sweater in the summer, one might not get to wear it until the following fall. Not so! Yeah, I've right. been wearing it every day since we left your place. <laughs> right. And now I'm going to light the fire. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't actually light the fire. I burned some stuff. You did? Just a little. Oh, okay. <laughs> It was 12. I wore my sweater, but I didn't, I didn't actually resort to putting the furnace on. So anyway. Yeah, yeah. it's been, it was chilly. Now it's fine though. Yeah. No, okay. it's good. That was last week. Right. <laughs> now it's summer. So um, you saw some of Janet's yarns that yeah. we've, we've done for her. So the first year we just spun in the natural colors of the, of the, uh, of the yarns. And then um, I think it's been two batches now that we've done that you've done some dyeing for her yeah. as well. So, uh, and I can't remember if we said it in the interview or not, but we buy fiber from yeah, Janet did. as well. Yeah. So we um, have a couple different um, blends, actually. One uh, that we had in the shop, which is the Belfast Bulky, which is 80% um, wool and 20% yeah, alpaca. Yeah, so I brought these because I mentioned them last time. Right. Bland slide. Yes. By Harry Shannon. And there's a hat to go with. But uh, this is sort of what the Belfast bulky. So that's always been available on our website. Right. And it's 20% of Janet's alpaca fiber. Yeah. So if you wanted to try something of Janet's in a wool blend. Right. And uh, this is a great project. I love these fingerless yeah. mitts. And that's a really nice yarn for them too. Really. Yeah, it worked perfectly. Yeah. I mean, I think bulky is pretty forgiving. You can always find patterns that will right. work with any bulky. And it's a four ply and it's 20% alpaca. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes in... in a selection of colors, not right. a ton of colors. But All on our website. Yeah, so this is always it. available. So if you yeah. haven't gone and checked out Belfast Bulky before, now you know where the alpaca comes from. Right. So I would encourage you to do so. It's a very pretty yeah. yarn, and it's really fun to work with. That's the plover. Very soft. This is plover. Yeah, plover. whatever. I don't okay. know. Plover, plover. <laughs> it's like the canoe newt thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's one. Okay. And then we're very excited because when... I think when we first started, we bought quite a large quantity of uh, fiber from Janet and we never really used it. We used a little bit for this, but we never really went full hog with it. So right. this was the time to do it. We yeah. made a new yarn. Yeah. And we talk a lot about over dyeing brown in the interview. And right. so we wanted to over dye some brown because as you can tell, it's sort of our favorite thing. Yeah. <laughs> so some of the colors are still drying. Right. Because this is how tight we are with our deadline. So I will, um, you'll be seeing them in a picture, but this is what I have on hand with me um, today. So these are all dyed over like a medium brown, rose mm. gray. Yeah, right. Uh, mixed 50% uh, rose gray alpaca mixed with 50% of our wool. And of course, I've picked fairly dark, deep shades because I am over dyeing them over a brown. So we have here Fox and Kits, Slate, and Pine Forest. Mm -hmm. And then the other colors we will show. But um, it's a really nice soft yarn. It's 100 grams and 250 yards. Right. And Kim can talk so about like the a spinning true, of it. Yeah, a true DK. Yeah. Now I would say. And um, it's quite fine because the alpaca is more dense than the wool. So even though the the weight is 100, 100 grams, if I was doing this in 100% uh, wool, the um, the actual yarn itself wouldn't be as fine as this, but it's, it's quite fine. And um, Janet alluded to elasticity in crimp and that kind of thing in the interview. But uh, so we've used 50% sheep's wool, 
our sheep's wool, which is super crimpy and squishy, as we've talked about many times, and uh, her alpaca. So now it, it gives it a, a more drape for sure. And I've spun it fairly loosely, so or plied it quite loosely, so it really blooms and softens. It really highlights the softness of the alpaca in that that uh, spinning spinning that way. I think so. it's lovely. If you're yeah. already thinking of fall projects, it's great. Right. And uh, I the colors, I put up the colors on Instagram. Not everybody would have seen them, but um, it would be okay for like a low contrast color work project. Uh, but they are all deeper, like, shades right. depth of shade is quite deep because of it being brown underneath mm -hmm. but you would never know that this was that brown rose no. gray color underneath yeah and i think this fox and kits is stunning i mean of course i like them all yeah um and the vineyard is always really pretty over the brown right it's our favorite thing always vineyard first when we have a brown to dye because yeah. i do do dyeing for some other alpaca um right producers as well occasionally and the the brown uh, the brown just gives it we talk about it but yeah. it just gives that depth of I don't know it's like the special sauce yeah and it's quite <laughs> lustrous this year yes yeah yeah so that always helps um so yeah so we've made as much as we could make but yes. again it is in limited quantities more than we had for i own a bunny last time yes. which sold out in three hours i'm really sorry if you ended up disappointed by that we we're trying not to make a batch quite that small again but yes. literally that's all we could get off the little bunnies yeah however I am starting a new round of brushing, okay. and it seems like their coats have grown quite a okay. bit since I did oh, it the okay, last good. time. Surprisingly. Yeah. I don't know if it's the oh. warmer weather. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. we won't put it up until we have about two full batches, yeah. which would be about 60 skeins, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. I and think that's only fair. Yeah. And we have, yeah, we have three batches of this. So you do okay. have a fairly good chance, at least in the first few days, to yeah. get um, a sweater quantity or whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So we're really, really, really happy with how it turned out. Yeah. Happy with everything. The spinning, the texture, the luster, the color. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're happy that we finally got to do something with Janet's yeah. fiber. And of course, Janet also has stuff on her online store, right. on her website that you can go take a look at. If you want 100% alpaca, we almost never spin 100% alpaca for our own shop. Right. I don't think we ever have. No. And we probably won't. Yeah. Um, so if you like 100% alpaca and you like my dyeing, that's another option too. Right. Um, so go check out Janet's stuff and get yourself one of those sweaters. <laughs> it's a hoodie actually. Like it's so nice. Yeah. yeah. And it seems to be flattering on everybody. I know. They're very comfy. Yeah. I love They're mine. Really nice. Yeah. I love them. So thank you, Janet. Yes. Who thanks, sure Janet. is absolutely watching this, of course. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And we'll link to all of her information yeah. in the show notes so you can find Janet easily. She does tours, like she said, yes. and so forth. Yeah, she's like definitely that. one of the most popular fiber destinations on the island. Yes, yes. Yeah, well yeah. worth booking a tour um, yeah. with her. She does a great job explaining everything. And she's yeah. very knowledgeable, obviously, as you already know by now. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we right. hope you'll check out the yarn. Right. And um, just a little, um, because we got to have a new new toy yeah. as a shop update. So um, I've, I always wanted one of the, a set of these. <laughs> what I want. Please in harmony where dreams come true. Yeah. <laughs> so you use these for your sweater. So yes. this is, these are actually the blocking, uh, I don't know what they call them, blocking pins. They're not pins, but you, I'll let you explain them because you use them on your sweater. Yeah. And I was a bit skeptical. I'm not going to lie. I'm just looking for the name. They just say blockers. Knit blockers. Yeah. Okay. So, um, they were great. So they're very wide. So it's kind of like putting in a bunch of T-pins at once. Right. And I liked that there were two different widths. So I was able, like for the band, I used these little ones. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure I would have enough because you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to need a lot of pins. But it actually, I had a few left over after blocking right. um, Barishwa. And I think I, there's 20 pieces in there. Yeah, so we'll put these online, and uh, we do use blocking wires for shawls, but these are great for sweaters, Right. and uh, a lot faster than putting in all of those little tiny pins, yeah. and a lot faster to disassemble, and they just seem stronger and more supportive. Like, right. you know how the pin can shift? Yeah. Um, or it's to hard to get in the in tension an right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these were great. So I actually really like them, and it just so happens we just got them in, and I just had a sweater to block. So. And it's uh, it adds a lot of efficiency to yes, the blocking. Definitely blocking, and yeah. you know by now if you've watched us before, we're very keen on blocking properly. So yeah, yeah, no, they were great. It was perfect for my project. And I think that um, 
with the you could use them with the wires as well because sometimes with the wires when you're um, blocking like big long stretches you have to put in so many so many pins that I think this would actually make it more efficient as well so you might be able to put a little bit more of a space between because they're very sturdy yeah so yeah they're very sturdy I really liked using them so these are under the accessories tab on yeah. our site now great so that's a new toy yeah because no it's a tool a it's tool a tool you need it you need it <laughs> Not a toy. Okay, so the next thing is something that we actually don't have in yet, but I have my delivery notification from UPS, so okay. I know it's coming. We're excited. Yeah, we're very excited. So um, I don't, I don't know what episode it was, so we'll put it down below. But I had showed my Carbeth um, Swan Dance uh, tunic that I that I knit, and uh, I was pretty uh, excited about the fact which. A lot of people know about but it was the first time that I knit with um, a yarn and stranding with a, a kid silk or it's a it's a silk and mohair blend lace weight so I did that and I was really really impressed about the way that it transformed the the um, the feel of our knitted yarn and uh, I am a little bit of a, I liked a little bit of fluff on my yarn I'm not uh, I don't really like too much bloom but uh, I do like a little bit of fluff I find it very nice and soft and lovely so uh, ever since I did this I've been looking for another project to do to do this but we obviously can't make a silk um, you can't for, under our own brand there's no silk local silk mm -hmm. so we won't we won't do it under our own brand so what we're bringing in is the uh, Rowan kids killed Kid Silk Haze, and I'm sorry that the label is so uh, smushed. smushed up, but I've been handling this quite <laughs> a bit, choosing the colors. And um, so we're really looking forward to be able to do uh, projects with, uh, with this, strand it with our own yarn in the, well, in any of the formulas that we, that we make. Mm -hmm. It just adds that little bit. We've got, um, we chose the colors uh, pretty carefully to make sure that we had colors that coordinated with uh, our most popular groups of yarn I would mm -hmm. say because they're they're they can do double duty for different mm -hmm. different colors so we will have that in uh tomorrow it's coming tomorrow which will be before this podcast yeah goes. and we'll put that up online and we'll uh we'll have make it available as well and I just if you haven't tried a project um stranding like this uh, just holding the two strands together I would um highly recommend it it's very satisfying and it just turns out beautifully yeah super and, cozy and yeah, soft yeah and, and you can add some good color highlights with it too yes so I actually used a coordinating color mm -hmm. not it's not matchy matchy it's like so you can add a bit of dimension to uh to the yarn even though our yarns have a lot of dimension anyway because of the way that we uh, do the dyeing it's they're never mm -hmm. really like flat solids but this just adds something uh something special so we're super excited about that and um we did order another special yarn which we'll talk about at, when that's on its way yeah here it's not it's not has it left yeah it's taken us left. forever to decide what else we might carry besides our own stuff yeah so we're really trying to select very carefully right. so we found something else that we think is pretty special that we'll probably never be able to make here and that's yeah. really the focus of anything else yeah. we, we retail it's going to be something that we obviously can't make ourselves right so we'll tell you about that next time yeah excellent yeah so that's really exciting okay so right. I think that's it for the shop update. Yeah. And we'll just make a little comment about knit night because oh, yeah. we started it's super fun. Yeah, it's we've started to get um, guests at knit night. People that are uh, vacationing here on Prince Edward Island are joining our knit night. We had um, somebody from just outside of Edinburgh, Scotland, who's never been to the Edinburgh Yarn uh, Festival. Yarn Festival. Oh. So she was gonna go and then hasn't had a chance to go. And she's she lives right there. She's quite the knitter, I have oh, to wow. say. Yeah, it was fascinating. Yeah. She was really uh she's really uh, a beautiful knitter. It's actually the mother of Neil who makes our buttons. So Margaret, hi. <laughs> and uh then we had other another uh two guests from Toronto that were here, Rebecca and Shay. And they were working on their projects, and we were just, uh, just well, we were thrilled that we had guests 
Yeah, it's yeah. tremendous. Yeah. Good, good job. We love to meet other people and, yeah. and uh, the more the merrier. And of course, it makes it really interesting. Right. And so far, Rachel's been able to keep up with the baking. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Our hero. You know yeah. how much we love Rachel. Yeah. So, great. <laughs> so I think that's it. And until the next time, so the next episode in two weeks, we'll say goodbye. Yeah, we're doing well to get these out during the summer. Yes. I'm very proud of us. Right. <laughs> we are busy, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.